Hey there, this is Akshit Nanan. Welcome back to a new video. And this video will be super helpful for all those people who are looking for Flutter internships and Flutter developer jobs. So I cracked Ticker Tape, which is by small case, uh, as a Flutter engineer, as a Flutter intern in 2022, September. So the position was uh, for Flutter interns, not for Flutter uh, full-time developers. And it was a LinkedIn post. So first point here that I got this position through LinkedIn. So in uh, September, I opened LinkedIn and I found that HR of Ticker Tape had put one job post and they were hiring Flutter interns from 2022 batch and 2023 batch. So I was from 2023 batch and I shared my resume with the HR through mail and within two days, I got one phone call. So I would consider this as a round one, which is a normal phone call where they were testing my communication skills, my current experience, uh, my current role, my current compensation and my future plans, right? So, and also they asked me about my projects. So I would consider this as a round one and this was a non-tech round. The HR only had called me, so it was a non-tech round and she basically asked me about my projects first of all, my current position. So I was working in a food tech startup, so I told her that I'm working in a food tech startup. Then why want to leave the current position and want to join Ticker Tape? So in that uh, scenario, you have to actually mention uh, why you, why would you love uh, working at Ticker Tape and what exciting things you can actually find working at Ticker Tape. So this you can mention, and this is the same thing I did. So why are, I want to join Ticker Tape and why I want to leave the current company? That was a third question. Next was uh, my previous experiences, whether I had actually worked uh, or because I was a college student. So I, I, like definitely she was asking about the internships, not full time or like work experience. So this was the next question, previous experiences, then the compensation. So she uh, disclosed the amount that they were offering for the intern position and I was okay with it. Right. So that's, that's, that's it. And then the final thing was my future plans, whether I was looking for PPOs or whether I've already got one PPO. So at that point of time, I did not have a PPO. So I told her that yes, I'll after the internship of six months. So that internship duration was six months. After that, yes, I'll be looking for placements also. Right. So this was it uh, about the first round. That was a HR round. It is a non-tech round. Next thing was after the phone call, she told me that within a few hours, I'm going to get one home assignment. So that home assignment, I can say it as the, th the second round. Uh, it was a home assignment. So it based, definitely it was a tech round. Right. So now let's talk about this home assignment because this was the biggest round and after that I only had one tech round of one hour and after that it was a final HR call, right? So in this home assignment, what I got, I got a PDF through mail. In that PDF, they were asking me to create one Flutter app. So Flutter app I had to create. In that PDF, they had given me five stocks. So five stocks I was given, right? Stock tickers basically, or you can say that stock IDs I was given, let's say stock ID one stock ID, two stock ID, three stock ID, four stock ID, five. So I, I got five stocks and definitely they are into FinTech. They are a mobile app where you can actually see the stock prices. So basically the assignment was related to that, right? So with this stock IDs, I also got one API endpoint, api.com something, something, something. And it has some query parameters, right? In that query parameters, I can actually pass the stock IDs. Okay. So this I got from them. Next, they had mentioned that I have to create one application where it will look something like this. They had given me some screenshots also, which were very helpful. And they asked me to copy the same design. In this app, I should have a, in the first page, I should have one list view. Okay. These list view will have five elements, basically depicting all the five stocks. Here should be the stock name. Here should be the current stock price. And there should be the arrow up or down, whether that stock price went up or went down. Basically what I had to do is I had to run one periodic function, which will fetch the stock prices after every five seconds. And based on that price can go up, down or remain the same based on that, this UI should update. That means UI had to update after every five seconds. Got it. It's simple. After that, the thing was here, it will be one history button. In this history, I can actually view the previous prices, let's say before 30 minutes or before one day. Next was one pause button. 
if I click on this pause button, the prices should become constant and there should not be another periodic call. After the pause button, there sh it should become a play button. If I click on this play but button, again, the periodic function should continue, right? Another thing was when I click on this tile, it should go to another page where I can see the graph, right? I can use any library to render this graph, right? So in this graph, I can see the prices and this graph should also update after every five seconds, right? Below that, I can have the stock name, price and arrow up and down based on the uh, price, whether it went up or went down, right? So this was a home assignment and I was free to choose any state management library. I was not comfortable with block at that point of time. So I used provider. So I used provider to complete the assignment and which all factors they were testing. So they had mentioned in their PDF that clean and modular code, uh, then archi architectural design and principles, which all software design pattern I'm using. So they had mentioned, they were checking that. Runtime performance and persistent, whether my app is not very laggy, my graph is not, uh, whether my graph is rendering the values properly, uh, whether it is consistent. Uh, so these things were they were checking. Error handling, which is very important because I was making an API call. So I should also handle the exceptions because that API call can give you any status code, right? 400, 500, uh, 401, unauthorized, bad requests, or server, anything. So whether I'm maintaining or managing that error handling or not, right? So this was the next point, then documentation. They were, I was uh, expected to write a readme file and explaining my code, putting some screenshots. So they were ex expect expecting that. Next was Git commit history. So I had to upload this code on GitHub within a private repository and they would check my Git commits and Git commit messages, whether I'm good with version control or not. So these are the things they were checking in that home assignment and they had given me six days, which I feel it was a big amount of time. So I had completed this assignment in two days and I submitted it. And after uh, two days, I got my result back and I was selected for the tech interview. Now let's go to that. This was round number three, right? In this round, it was for one hour. So they had scheduled this meeting for one hour where I was interviewed by the mobile team lead of that uh, company, ticket tape company, right? Now in this round, what I have to do is, first of all, not I have to do is, they had to ask me questions. So first thing they asked me about my projects, then my home assignment, how I felt it was, whether I found it easy, difficult or intermediate. So I answered those questions and they asked me about my projects basically, uh, which all projects I have made. So I had made that emotion detection app in Flutter. So then they asked me about how I actually built the ML model or how I was actually communicating with the ML model through my app. So they asked me this and soon within five to six minutes, they came on a tech problem. Now one thing, this tech problem was not a DSA question, it was not a CP question, it was a Flutter question itself. So in this entire interview, I was not asked any DSA question, right? So many people think that you have to do, have to do, have to do DSA CP. It's not compulsory. If you are applying for a developer position, they may not ask you DSA and CP questions. That's a fact, right? So in this uh, tech interview problem, they asked me to open my assignment. In that assignment, they gave me some additional problems, right? that I have to code in front of them, say sharing my screen and my camera should be on and that was expected, right? So first thing was, I told you about this uh, play and pause button. So this was kind of, I would say it was not an easy thing to do and I was actually stuck at that point of time and interviewer also helped me to get to the solution. But finally, I, I was able to code it and get, got selected, but interviewer had to help me, right? And in these interviews, don't assume that you have to code everything on your own. Interviewers do help you at some point of time. It's a fact. And they are actually seeing how you're approaching towards the solution. It's not like that you have to have to reach to the solution uh, on your own. They help you and they see your approach, right? So in this assignment or in this problem statement, what I was expected to do was, uh, so I told you that I was making periodic calls after every five seconds. So I was using a future builder and I was not very comfortable with block at that point of time. So uh, if I would have used block, it would become a very simple problem, but I was using provider. So it was kind of difficult for me and I was, my concepts were not very clear at that point of time, right? So um, what I had to do is, this will go as, as it is, like it was going, that after, after every five seconds, your value should change for these stocks. But when you click on this pause button, it should pause, that's okay. Now here is the crux. If you double click on this pause button, 
that value should go from 5 seconds to 1 second, right? And if you click on this pause button again, it should go from 1 second to 2 second. So this was kind of the problem and I got stuck here. For around 20-25 minutes, I was actually trying to do multiple things. I did one thing, I was able to do this one second, but again, I was not able to do this because I was stuck in state management, right? And this might solve, this might sound a simple problem here, but at that point in time, when people are looking at you and your screen, it can become difficult, right? So uh, this became a problem for me, but at the final uh, interview gave me some approach using while loop and timer package. And finally, I was able to solve the problem and show the code. So this was the tech uh, round and it lasted for around 40, 45 minutes or around one hour, I can say. But finally, uh, I got selected and after one day I got my uh, uh, result that I am selected. Uh, I have passed this interview round also. And again, that again, as you know, that the final round was HR round. And in this, they asked me about uh, my future plans again and the same thing and why I want to enter into a uh, fintech industry, why I'm connected to it, why I love it. These are problems, the basic questions. Uh, basically, it was this was the main interview that this home assignment was the first thing, the complex thing, and second was this uh, tech interview round, right? So this was it. Uh, then I finally got selected as a Flutter intern in this position. I worked for six months and then shifted my company, changed my company. So this was it. I hope you like this video and I hope you would get some value from that. If you want me to make more such videos on interview experiences and taking mock interviews of some other developers, do let me know in the comment section. And if any kind of other video you want, let me know in the comment section. Till then, keep coding, keep innovating and thanks a lot.